Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hour, the radio show that brings you all the latest information about events in and around our city. Today, we have with us Cynthia Smith, who is heading up this year's City Fair. Cynthia, would you start by giving us some of the basic information about the fair? Where will it take place this year? I'm glad you asked that question, because I know most people will be expecting the fair to be at the fairgrounds as usual, but we've had to change the location this year due to some construction work. You know, they're building the new high school in that neighbourhood and they've been using the fairgrounds as a place to store construction materials. So we've moved the fair to City Park, which I think is a wonderful location. Yes, that will be a great place for the fair. I understand that the fair begins on Friday morning with a special opening event. Actually, it won't begin until that evening. But you're right about the special event. Traditionally, we've begun with a parade, but this year our opening event will be a special dance performance. And the most exciting part is that the mayor will be one of the dancers. The mayor is a woman of many talents. Cynthia, could you tell our listeners about the price of admission? What will it cost to attend the fair? We're trying to keep the price down as much as possible. A three-day pass is just $25, or you can buy a Saturday or Sunday only pass for $15. The opening event on Friday, the dance performance, doesn't cost anything to attend, and we're hoping a lot of people will come to watch that. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Could you tell us about some of the events planned for Saturday and Sunday, the main days of the fair? We have a lot of exciting things planned. There are a number of events, especially for children, including a clown show on Saturday afternoon. On Saturday evening, we've got an event that can be enjoyed by the whole family, a concert by the lake. I'm sure that will be a popular event. Is there anything special planned for Sunday? Yes, a really fun event. And we hope a lot of people will participate. There'll be a singing contest in the afternoon. It's open to everyone at no charge. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced singer or not. If you've always dreamed of singing on stage, this is your chance. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. I'd also like your listeners to know that besides the special events I've mentioned, there will be things taking place all weekend. For example, at the food court, international food will be served. You'll be able to sample dishes from all around the world. There will also be special games for children at different locations around the fair. Will there be things people can buy, souvenirs, anything like that? We have a large area set aside where there will be crafts for sale. This will be an opportunity to buy many lovely handmade things and to get to know some of our local artists and craftspeople as well. It sounds like there will be a lot of fun for everyone at this year's fair. Thank you for sharing the information with us, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, I am your counsellor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually, there are games on the courts, but during league time, only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9 a.m. until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students. One additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight except for during testing periods when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a $1 fine per week that the book is overdue. I will repeat that. There is a hefty $1 fine per week. So it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it, plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please, enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with 200 computers for student use. 
They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one hour time slots. You may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between a student, Aldo, and his supervisor, Dr. Hurst, about his research assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 23. So, Aldo, how's it going so far with your assignment? Not too bad. You're looking at the community round here. That's right. How people perceive the community they are in. Have you made much progress? Hmm. I conducted quite a lot of interviews on the street with local residents. Their responses are interesting. I haven't got quite as many yet as I'd like. I had wondered if I'd have language problems, particularly with the different accents. I seem to have managed, though. Having to work in the open has made it harder, and with the cold weather there's been recently, people don't necessarily want to stop and talk like they do if it's nice and sunny. That's something I've had to deal with. Of course, some people are too busy to stop and talk, but that's OK. I see. So, have you formed a good overall picture of how people view the community? To an extent. I've certainly talked to plenty of older people. I guess they may have more time to talk. I still don't really have enough young mothers, though. I've managed to get enough older mothers and children through the schools. That's something I had been worried about. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. Now, how are you going to deal with all the data you've collected? That's the difficult part. I guess I need to run some analyses, but I'm rather unclear about what methods to use. You've told me you're confident about using computers, so you just need some input on choosing programmes. You should attend a statistics seminar. They're held every Friday after the methodology seminars in room 105. That should help you to select an approach. Oh, good. I'll do that. Now you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Meanwhile, let's hear something about what you've learned. Yes, I talked to a number of residents. Good. I imagine they didn't always have the same opinions. Views were certainly quite mixed. Take sports facilities. In general, people seem to think they weren't very good. There's no swimming pool in the area, for example. But at the same time, there's a new football training area. 
It looks very smart to me, but it doesn't seem to get used very much. People seem to prefer sitting around in the parks. They enjoy that, taking picnics and so on. Although they want the council to be more efficient at cleaning, there's a lot of litter. People are obviously very concerned about their children's learning. The general view seems to be that early schooling at primary level is of a good standard in the area, but that this standard declines as children move up through the system. The colleges were criticised in particular. OK, now are you going to collect any more data? Some, I hope. There's a local festival next week, and I think the events there will give me some useful opportunities. I talked to a council officer about it all. Good. What does it involve? First, there's a dance show, which I'm sure I'll enjoy. The council explained that the concert hall's being renovated and won't be ready in time, so it's being held in the main square, which I think will be better anyway. At least I'll have more space to wander around in. True. And so I hope to be able to carefully watch the age groups that are there in the audience and make notes about how they interact. So that's one event. Then, the following day, there's another interesting event which I look forward to going along to, and that's a cookery competition. Oh, yes. Interesting. I think so. Yes, that one's being organised in the town hall, which has a big space, apparently. With food and cooking from all the different people in the area, the council officer told me that it'll be a good chance to find out about the different cultures that make up the community. Sounds promising. Then there's one more event I'd like to go along to. The council officer promised me that the courses fair will be interesting. It's going to be in the Langtree Theatre, and the officer said lots of teachers will be there. I've already talked to plenty of them, but he advised me to put some questions to the head of education, who will also be there. That's all very useful. OK, I suggest you come back next week. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a wildlife expert giving a talk to a group of bird lovers in the UK about a species called the tawny owl. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good evening, everyone. You're all likely to be familiar with pictures of the tawny owl because of all the owl species in the UK, it's actually the most common one. But the chances are that you're more likely to have heard one than actually seen one, as it's also strongly nocturnal. This means that it normally ventures out at night. So, what kind of habitat does the tawny owl prefer? Well, a survey carried out in the 1980s confirmed that this owl is most likely to be found in woodland. If you look at a map of tawny owl distribution across Britain, you'll only see gaps in the treeless marshy areas of eastern England and in some of the more upland parts of northwest Scotland. However, you can sometimes find populations of tawny owls in urban areas too, either in parks or in large gardens. 
The tawny owl shows some obvious adaptations to its natural habitat. For example, both its wings and its tail are short, which helps it to manoeuvre through the trees. Also, the bird's plumage is a mixture of brown and grey, and this provides suitable camouflage for when the owl perches up against a tree trunk. Then there are its large eyes. The tawny owl's visual capacities are considerably better than those of humans, and although it can't see in complete darkness, it's sufficiently well equipped to be able to navigate its way around woodland on all but the most overcast nights. Another factor that contributes to the tawny owl's success as a hunter is its excellent memory of the layout of different areas. If you combine this ability with the owl's strongly territorial and sedentary nature, most populations of tawny owl are sit-and-wait predators, you realise that it has a good opportunity to predict where prey might be found. Finally, as well as having large eyes, the owl's sense of hearing is excellent, and this helps it to locate potential prey as it sits on its perch. Turning now to the tawny owl's diet, woodland tawny owls feed mainly on mammals, especially small ones, such as wood mice and bank voles. But they'll also take things like frogs or bats, or even fish, if they happen to be available. In urbanised landscapes, the owls seem to prey more on birds. So there are some differences there. Let's just look briefly now at survival rates in the tawny owl. Young tawny owls face a difficult time once they leave home, and two out of every three are likely to die within their first year. So, with such high mortality levels, it's a good job that established breeding pairs can produce young over a number of seasons, and maximise their chances of passing their genes on to the next generation of owls. I've already mentioned the sedentary nature of the tawny owl, but it's not just adult tawny owls that are sedentary in their habits. Young birds, dispersing away from where they were born, rarely move far. The average distance is just four kilometres. There also appears to be some reluctance to cross large bodies of water. The owl is absent from many of the islands around our shores, with only occasional sightings in Ireland and the Isle of Wight off the south coast of England. Right, well, now I'll show you some photographs that have been taken in one or two of the... That is the end of part four.